the Jack Benny program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike. Lucky tastes better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky tastes better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting, fine tobacco. Lucky tastes better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike, Lucky Strike. This is Don Wilson, friends. You know, after all is said and done, the reason anybody smokes is for enjoyment. The enjoyment that comes from the taste of a cigarette. Yes, smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact of the matter is, Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. First, because they're made of fine tobacco. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Second, Lucky's are made better. Made round, firm, fully packed to draw freely and smoke evenly. Fine tobacco in a better made cigarette gives you better taste every single time. Next time, ask for Lucky Strike, because smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact of the matter is, Lucky's taste better. You'll know that's true the minute you light up a Lucky. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike, Lucky Strike. The Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Now, ladies and gentlemen, spring has come to Southern California. Birds are twittering in the treetops and buds are bursting on the branches. So without further ado, we'd like to show you how a typical gentleman farmer is heralding the arrival of spring. The time, early afternoon. The scene, Jack Benny's backyard. The farmer, Jack Benny! I planted last year came up nice. Look at those nice straight rows. 200 stalks of corn, 150 cabbages, 300 strawberry vines. Hmm. One measly coffee plant. <laughs> but who knew? <laughs> Let's see now. I better get these string beans in. I'll set them right next to the tomatoes here. Well, there's one. Gee, I got a hundred more to go. Oh, Rochester, I want you to come here and give me a hand. But, boss! Rochester, you've been in that swimming pool long enough. Now, come on. But, boss, I'm not through planting the rice. <laughs> Never mind that. I need you here. Okay. So worried about the rice. Sorry, I gave him those chopsticks for Christmas. Here I am. Well, you can start with this row here. Yes, sir. Now, first you put the plant in, then sprinkle it over with a layer of vigoro. Cover that with some dirt, then a three-inch layer of bone meal, then some more dirt. Then you put on another big, thick layer of vigoro. And be very careful, Rochester, because you know what we're planting here, don't you? No, but it ain't going to be lilac bushes. <laughs> They're string beans, and let's get started. Boss, are you planting beans again? Yes, why? I thought you'd give up on beans after what happened last year. They were so small, the bugs were picketing them. I'm not trying to be funny, Rochester. I'm going to plant beans, and this year they'll be the biggest ones in Beverly Hills. Now, let's get going. There. That one's in deep enough. <laughs> you sure look funny in those overalls and that old straw hat. I do look like a farmer in this outfit, don't I? With those long white gloves on, you look like Hildegard. 
Well, I've got soft, lovely hands, and I'm going to keep them that way. <laughs> I think I've got some of these plants upside down. No, I guess they're all right. Dennis, Dennis, don't mow so close to the tomato. Watch it. I'm almost through, Mr. Benny. Well, keep at it. And, Dennis, when you're through mowing the lawn, I want you to water it. Okay, I'll turn on the sprinkling system. I haven't got a sprinkling system. You have now. What? I thought the hose was a snake and shot it full of holes. <laughs> Dennis, that was a brand new hose, and I'm going to deduct the price of it from your salary. I was afraid that would happen. You were? Yeah, boy, am I glad I saved the last bullet for myself. Huh? Well, here goes. Dennis, put down that gun. I'll pay for the hose. I knew you were yellow. <laughs> Never mind. You just get back to work. I'll hold on to the gun. Okay. Boss, I finished the roll of string beans. Good. Now we'll plant some celery. You ought to plant pistachios. They're terrific. But, Dennis, pistachios are nuts. Well, who isn't? <laughs> Dennis, look at that mountain over there. That's it. Now hold your head still. Boss, boss, put down that gun. I only wanted to scare him. I couldn't hit a pointed head like his in a million years. <laughs> Now, go ahead, Dennis. Finish your work. Okay. See you later. Ding, ding. Ding, ding. <laughs> he always plays conductor when he mows the lawn. <laughs> what a kid. Now, let's see. Hey, Rochester, look at these mushrooms here. I don't remember planting any mushrooms. Those are toadstools, boss. They're poison. No, no, Rochester. Go ahead and taste one. I think they're mushrooms. You think? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, until you're positive, my attitude is negative. <laughs> oh, what a baby. Afraid to eat a little plant. Uh-huh. You know, Rochester, there's an old saying, a coward dies a thousand deaths. A hero dies but once. Did you ever hear that saying before? Yeah, and I want to be able to hear it again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, don't eat it. Who cares? Hello, Rochester. Oh, the garden looks lovely. Thanks, Miss Livingston. I see you got the scarecrow up already. This is me, and you know it. <laughs> Mary, did you buy that package of cucumber seeds like I asked you to? Yeah, here they are. They were ten cents. Thanks. Gee, just think, Mary. I'm going to take these little seeds, plant them in the ground, and before you know it, vines will spring up with oodles and oodles of cucumbers on them. Isn't nature wonderful? Yeah. And, Mary, half of those cucumbers are going to be yours. The heck with nature. Give me my dime. <laughs> Give me my dime. Give me my dime. You'll be sorry when the crop comes in. I feel it's going to be a big season. Oh, you're some farmer. You and your crazy experiments. They're not so crazy. Remember last year? You sprinkled cheese all over the ground and tried to raise au gratin potatoes. <laughs> All right, but I still say it doesn't hurt to experiment. Now, let's see. Oh, Mary, I was just having a little argument with Rochester here. Look, are those things there mushrooms or toadstools? Those are toadstools. They are? Well, I'm certainly glad you told me. I almost ate one. You almost ate one? Well, I mean, I would have eaten one after you did. With me laying there? <laughs> I better dig these up and throw them away. I'm all through, Mr. Benny. Good. Then, Mr. Benny, as soon as your lawn needs cutting again, you'll be sure to let me know now, won't you? I certainly will, and I appreciate your interest. Well, I like to keep the grounds looking nice and in tip-top shape. Good, good. This is a beautiful place, and someday I might buy it. Really, Dennis? Yeah. I'll throw you out so fast it'll make your head spin. <laughs> Dennis, go home already. Okay, goodbye already. Goodbye, goodbye already. <laughs> Mary. Yes? Do you think Kenny Baker is too old to push a lawnmower? <laughs> oh, Jack, every time Dennis gets a little aggravated, you always... Hello, Jack. Hey, Mary, it's Bob Crosby. Hi, Bob. Fine, Jack. Hello, Mary. Hello, Bob. Out for a little walk today? Well, not exactly. Uh, I told the boys in the band to pick me up here in our orchestra bus. Oh, are you leaving town again? Yeah, we got a one-night stand in Chicago. A one-night stand? You and the boys are going all the way to Chicago for that? Well, the boys just couldn't turn this down, Jack. She must be quite an important occasion. I'll say it is. Petrella's dog is going to be a year old. <laughs> oh, yes. 
says, Yasha Heifetz left this morning. <laughs> oh, Bob, I don't mean to be rude, but I want to get all these rows planted by 6 o'clock. Well, why 6 o'clock? As soon as it's dark, his help has to run for the border. <laughs> Mary, stop making things up. I do all the work myself. See, si, senor. <laughs> You keep quiet and put on a dry shirt. <laughs> hey, Bob, as long as... Well, that must be the boys, Jack. I better get going. I'll walk around to the front with you, Bob. I gotta be running along, too. Say, Bob, it must be nice for the orphans to have their own bus to travel around in. Yeah, say, it's a nice bus, too. But, Bob, why is all that smoke coming out of the exhaust? Well, kerosene always smokes that way. Kerosene? Why don't you use gasoline? Oh, we tried that. But you see, when the boys smell anything over 80 octane, they run for the olive. <laughs> you mean they actually drink gasoline? Well, Bagby even drinks the kerosene. <laughs> no. Yeah, at night the boys stick a wick in his head and use them to read by. <laughs> Well, I gotta be going anyway. Okay, Bob, I'll be seeing you. So long. Have a nice trip. Bye, Bob. Bye, Mary. What a crazy gang. Look at them in the bus there. Yeah, and look at that license plate. Brew 102. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jack, I better be getting home. All right, I'll have Rochester get the car out. Oh, no, Jack, it's such a nice day. I'd rather walk. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, goodbye, Mary. Bye. Well, I suppose I better get back to work. Eh, I've had enough for one day. I think I'll go in the house and clean up. Fresh vegetables, tomatoes, lettuce, string beans. Hey, mister, would you like to buy some nice fresh veggies? Oh, it's you. <laughs> what? You ain't fooling nobody with these petunias and tulips out here in front. I know what's going on in that backyard. All right, so I raise a few things to eat. Look, mister, I haven't made a sale all day. Why don't you give me a break and buy something? Well, all right. I'll take a dozen oranges. A dozen oranges? Two dozen pears. Two dozen pears? And a half a dozen apples. And a half a dozen... I knew it, I knew it. Everything with seeds. <laughs> But it ain't enough you're growing vegetables. Now you gotta start with the fruits. <laughs> but I owe... If you want me out of business, get an injunction. Goodbye. <laughs> Some businessman. If he's so worried about competition, why doesn't he buy me out? The Wang Fu Laundry did. <laughs> oh, well, I guess I'll go in and clean up. I'll just slip into this clean shirt. Hello, here. Jack. Don, where'd you come from? Oh, I came in the back way. I thought you'd be working in the garden. Well, I was, Don, but I've had enough for one day now. Gee, and I talked the sportsmen into coming over to help you. The sportsmen? Where are they? Well, they're working now. I'll call them in. Okay. Hey, wait a minute, Don. They don't seem to mind working in my yard. They're even singing. They are? Yeah, I'll open the window. We can listen. Lucky 
start puffing and you'll say there is nothing with better taste it's lucky's I lie. From the plant came the leaf, from the leaf came tobacco, from tobacco fine and light comes lucky strike. boys are clever. They have a commercial for everything. And they're such good workers, too. I'll get it, boss. Okay. Mr. Benny's residence, star of stage, screen, radio, television, and if the farmer's market hasn't got it, we have. <laughs> What's that? Yes, he's right here. It's for you, Mr. Wilson. It's your wife. Oh, thank you, Rochester. Hello, dear. Well, I'm going to guess we're having for dinner tonight. Oh. Well, then I suggest we have hors d'oeuvre, soup, nice Caesar salad, and for meats, I'd say a couple of chickens, an eight-pound roast, and a chafing dish full of meatball. Yeah, I think that ought to do it. You're welcome, dear. Goodbye. Don, who's your wife having for dinner tonight? Just me. The rest canceled out. <laughs> I should have known, Don. By the way, Jack, perhaps you'd like to come over for dinner. Oh, some other time, Don. You know, I've been working so much that I want to lie down for a while. You know, I'm kind of tired from all the gardening I've done. Ah, uh, Jack, don't tell me you planted vegetables again this year. Certainly. Why shouldn't I? I thought you'd give up after those awful beans you grew last year. Look, Don. Those beans were so lousy, even your garbage disposal threw them back at you. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> so long, Jack. Goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> Gee, I, I really am tired. I'm sleepy, too. I worked hard today. I think I'll lie down on the sofa here. Ah, that feels good. Uh, what's everybody picking on my beans for? So last year they weren't so big. This year they'll be great. That new chemical fertilizer is guaranteed to make anything grow. Say, I wonder if... Nah, it'll probably burn my head. <laughs> I can't wait till those beans come up. I'll show everybody. I'll show them. was inside. What am I doing out here in the garden? Say, look what happened to my beans. The beanstalk goes way up to the sky, through the clouds. I can't even see the top of it. Well, I'm going to climb to the top. I'm going to be like Jack in the beanstalk. <laughs> I better rest. I must have climbed 500 feet, and I'm nowhere near the top. See, look how small everything looks down there. Hey, the rest of my garden is growing, too. Look at that tremendous honeydew melon. Oh, no, it's Sammy the drummer's head. <laughs> a mile high. Gee, from way up here, you can see everything in Beverly Hills. Look, there's the California Bank. 
And say, there's Esther Williams out in her backyard taking a sun bath. Gosh, what a predicament. I don't know which to look at. <laughs> see, if I lean out real far, I can see the entire city of Los Angeles. Gee, it looks... See, the branch broke. I'm falling. I'll be killed. Gosh. I'm not even hurt a bit. Wow, am I lucky. I landed on the smog. <laughs> I never knew that Los Angeles smog was thick enough to support you. But then it's been supporting comedians for years. <laughs> Well, I better start climbing back up. Well, here I am at the top. See, look at this place. This is fantastic. Look at the trees. There's money growing on them. Gee, I'm a stranger in paradise. <laughs> hey, what's the matter? The sky is getting dark. Gee, what's that? B five fo fum. I smell the blood of a comedian. <laughs> Say, are you the giant? No, I'm the assistant giant. You better go see the giant. He owns this place. Oh. Well, can you take me to him? I haven't got time. I gotta mow these clouds. See you later. Ding 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 ding. <laughs> hmm. Well. I better go see the giant, but I don't know where he lives. Hello, Jackie boy. <laughs> oh, hello. How are you? Fine. Are you going to give me a great big kiss like you always do? Sure. Here. Ah. <laughs> uh. That was wonderful. Oh, kiss me again. She has nothing to do with Jack and the Beanstalk, folks. I always dream about her. <laughs> well, I better go see the giant. Gee, I wish I knew where he lived. I'll ask that rabbit. Excuse me, Mr. Rabbit. What's up, Dad? I'm looking for the giant's house. Do you know where he lives? Uh, yeah, it's the second castle around the corner, Doc. Thank you. And for being so nice, I'm going to send you a big bunch of carrots. Oh, uh, no thanks, chum. I'm on a diet. I was getting so fat I couldn't move. No kidding. Yeah, I wasn't happy because I was too hippie to hoppy. <laughs> oh. Hey, uh, why do you keep staring at me like that? Oh, I didn't mean to be rude, Mr. Rabbit, but you remind me an awful lot of a friend of mine, Frank Remley. <laughs> oh, uh, is he a rabbit? No, but he's got pink eyes, too. <laughs> but his nose stays still and his head twitches. <laughs> well, I gotta go to the giant's house. So long, Benny. So long, Bunny. I'm off to see the giant. Well, here's the giant's house. I'm going to knock on the door. Gee, look at the giant's laundry hanging out there on the line. Gosh, he has the biggest underwear I ever saw. The V in BVD looks like a Cadillac. <laughs> Uh-oh, I hear someone coming to open the door. Come in. I'd like to... Wait a minute. Mary, what are you doing here? I'm the giant's wife. Just because I kissed that girl? <laughs> You're the giant's wife? And he's a big giant, too. He's 70 feet tall. Here he comes now. Say, 
Are you the giant? Yes, I'm a big one, aren't I? <laughs> Look, I want to discuss some business with you. Hey, now, don't bother me. I have to feed my chicken that lays the golden egg. You have a chicken that lays golden eggs? Sure. It's that one at your feet. Now watch. You go ahead, chicken, and lay a golden egg. <laughs> Imagine that a chicken that lays golden eggs. What do you call it? Barbara Hutton. <laughs> oh. Hey, now, you said you wanted to see me about business. What is it? Well, your castle and everything else is on top of a beanstalk, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Well, a beanstalk is growing in my garden, so everything here belongs to me. No, it doesn't. Yes, it doesn't. First, I'm going to take this wonderful chicken, the one that lays the golden egg. Here, chick, 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 chick. There, there, I've got you. Come on. Here, that chicken's mine. Put it down. That's right. I'm taking it back to my house with me. Well, I'm coming after you. He's gaining it. Well, I ran off the edge of the beanstalk. I'm falling. I'm falling. Flatten your wings, chicken, and give me some help. This is awful. I'm falling. Boss! I'll be killed. I'll be killed. Boss, wake up! Wake up! I'll be... Huh? Oh, it's you, Rochester. Gosh, what a dream I was having. Rochester, I dreamt I had, I had a chicken that laid golden eggs. Well, stop squeezing that pillow. All you're getting out of it is feathers. <laughs> Rochester, fix me something to eat. That climbing gave me an appetite. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the very best Easter gift of all is the support you give through Easter seals to children who need your help. These seals provide medical care, nursery centers, and many other things that are needed. So give and give generously to the Easter seal agency in your community. Or send your contribution to Crippled Children, care of your local post office. Thank you. Jack will be back in just a minute. But first, a word from the sweetheart of Lucky Strike. Hi, friends. This is Dorothy Collins. You know, I'll bet that if someone asked you why you smoked, what it was exactly you liked about a cigarette, I'll bet the important word in your answer would be... Taste. Because, gee, isn't good taste what everybody wants in a cigarette? Smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact of the matter is, Lucky's taste better. And there are two good reasons why that's true. In the first place, L.S. NFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Naturally mild, good-tasting tobacco. And second, Lucky's are made better to taste better made round and firm and fully packed to draw freely and smoke evenly. And that, friends, is the whole story. That's exactly why Lucky's taste better, because Lucky's are made with fine tobacco and because they're made better. Why don't you try a carton soon? Be happy. Go Lucky. How about it? Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting. Fine tobacco. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike. Good night, everybody. We're a little late. program is written by Sam Perrin, Milt Josephsberg, George Balzer, John Packerberry, Al Gordon, Al Goldman, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. The Jack Benny program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. Stay tuned now for Amos and Andy, which follows immediately over most of these same stations. This is the CBS Radio Network. KNX, AM and FM, Los Angeles. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.